Hello, and thank you for joining me for uh, what I think I'm going to actually make part three of the To Shell and Back Again series. Um, I previously recorded a video that I introduced as part three, but that one ended up being uh, a little bit longer and covers some more complicated things, so I think that's probably going to be part four instead. Um, so this one, I guess, will be part three. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a mission, uh, hopefully an easy mission. Um, which is uh, credentials needed. Um, usually these are pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, in fact, you can almost always complete these without doing any kind of hacking at all. Um, although in this case, we are going to go through it as though we, we did need to do some hacking. Um, but usually you can complete these with a social engineering email, uh, no hacking required. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So. We have our mission email over here. Client wants the login credentials of the user shell. Man, shell. I I've been saying that word a lot. Um, we have a remote IP and a local IP. So let's see what we get. Uh, we're going to probe the remote IP. Um, wow, no open ports. All right. Well, we, al we always have port zero on the router. So um, that's already the default port uh, when you run probe. So we don't need to set it with target. So let's just go ahead and run db-r, router 208. Um, we've got a guest shell. That's good enough. So let's go ahead and use that. Uh, malp-b. We've got our guest shell uh, number three. We're going to upload the R kit. And yes, we want to run shell silently. No, we don't want to do launch parameters. Um, all right. And let's go ahead and uh, so we don't have a we don't have a password yet. We don't have a root password. Um, we probably don't have access to the password file. But even if we did, on routers they tend to be empty, so we can't just decipher it. So with shell we have Brutus. So let's run Brutus. Uh, wow! It immediately found the password. No deciphering. Nothing. We got Pensi. P E N C I. Um, and then we've got a root shell in the buffer. That was unbelievably fast. Um, okay, uh, let's look at the buffer because um, I want to take that root shell and add it to cob. So it's at one. All right, so let's go back, we'll quit out of malp. We do cob set shell at b1 to put the uh, buffer entry at index one into the uh, custom object um, with at the index shell and then I'm going to quit Y to exit out of that go back to uh, shell running on my rental server um, and then cob get shell to retrieve that shell object I just put in the custom object we'll pipe it into malp um, actually you know what uh, I'm going to purge malp real quick so let's purge the buffer purge dash B space Y to purge the buffer and I'm going to run that again. Cob, cob get shell space mount uh, adds that root shell back to the buffer. So, um, so we're in it now. Um, let's just see. Uh, we've got the root shell on the router. Oh, we were going to look. For, okay, so we need a bounce is what we're looking for because we need to get credentials off of 192.168.0.4. So um, I'm going to go ahead and run shell. Uh, just typing in shell uh, here will just find, it'll run the first instance of shell that it finds, which is already on that router because we uploaded the root kit previously uh, with the guest shell. Um, so real quick, I'm going to just silent clean, scrub the logs, and let's go ahead and look for a bounce. Um, so we'll do meta load net.so. Um, and what we're doing is we're scanning local libraries uh, to see if we can get any exploits that weren't available to us remotely uh, or on our kernel router library. So net.so, you can only exploit locally. So we're going to try that. Um, and then I'm going to do this cool trick with meta that swaps out the meta exploit libraries. So meta import at, at O for referencing the custom object and then mix0 uh, is the meta exploit library from my my home computer, my rental computer in this case, um, that swaps them and then now I can do meta scan which will scan the local library using the hardware on my home computer. Looks like we got a lot of options here. And then meta restore swaps, oops, meta restore now 
swaps back to the previous one, which is the meta exploit on the target. Um, and now I can do Royal, which will run all of those exploits. Uh, did we get a bounce? No. We got, what do we get? We got a root file. Not all that useful. Um, hmm. And I just did a video that had this same library and it was very annoying. Let's see if we can shortcut this a little bit. What do I have? Uh, I still have my insecure libraries. I do. Let's put a copy of libhttp152 up there because I think we have a root computer with no requirements uh, in that library. So let's just put that up there. Um, I'm going to let's see. Do I have my home computer in the buffer here? Is that something I can do? Um, no. Is it in Cobb? Probably not in Cobb either. Uh, let's check Cobb indexes with list what's in Cobb. Stack pool, but I don't think that's it. So nothing useful there. All right. Uh, quit Y will get us back to the rental. Um, and then I'll go into the buffer here, go to that root shell, and I'm going to do 7 for SCP. Um, and then, uh, so I'm going to copy from this libhttp152.so, uh, libhttp152.so, copy to slash lib, and we're going to upload. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because this library, this libhttp152.so, uh, I believe has a root, well, I know it has a root computer uh, vulnerability in it. Um, which on a router should give us a bounce, and I don't think it has any requirements. Um, although I did obtain it from a computer that wasn't a router, so I could be mistaken about that. But let's just see. So we're going to go back to that root shell. We're going to hit 8 to run it. Uh, again, we'll type in shell there, no launch parameters, and we're going to do meta load. Oh, I think I need to rename it. So uh, move slash lib slash lib http 152.so slash lib slash lib http.so um, I don't know if you really have to rename them or not. You, you may be able to use it with the name that it has, but um, just in case. Um, okay, so meta load lib h uh, slash lib slash slash lib http.so uh, file not found. Well, that's odd. Oh, I guess we don't need the full path. So meta load lib http.so. There we go. And that's 152. And then we'll do meta import at o m y x 0 again to swap to my local uh, meta exploit instance. And then meta scan. And then, all right, so we got a lot of stuff here. So we'll hit return, meta restore. That, that swaps back to the meta exploit on the target. Um, and then let's do uh, Royal, let's see what we get. Uh, not as much as I was hoping. So I know we have a root computer on here. We need a non-root user. Is that what the problem is? We need a non-root user? Or do I need to pass in an IP? Because I didn't pass in an IP address either. Um, All right, well, several of these are complaining about, uh, oh, here we go, no LAN IP indicated or invalid. So this might be our bounce. So, uh, well, I mean, it's definitely a bounce. It might be our root bounce. So let's try that again with zap. Uh, let's see, what is that? That's o OC used TA, I believe. Is that it? Or maybe it's cell text serid. I think it's the cell text one. So zap, and then we want um, the cell text. Uh, I don't see. Okay, here we go. That's number 14. And let's put our IP address in there. Uh, copy. 
Yeah, it did. All right, so we'll paste that. Um, yeah, wrong one. Uh, okay, so let's try that again. If that's not it, then it's going to be 15. So zap and 15. And we'll try that again. Paste. There we go. We got a, what do we get? We got a root computer for the target. Beautiful. That is exactly what I wanted. So root computer for the target. Uh, we need a password. So uh, let's grab the pass file, which is two. Um, did it already? No, it just put them in the transmission buffer. It didn't uh, decrypt them. That's fine. So they're in the transmission buffer. So if I press three, dump tbuff. Uh, no. I don't know why sometimes that sometimes that sends it I think that just sends it to root pass on whatever computer it's running on. It doesn't send it to that's fine. It doesn't send it it doesn't transmit it to the home computer. It just sends it to root pass on whatever computer this is running on. Uh, but that's okay. We have another command transmit. We'll send it to the home oh, it's empty. That's annoying. Uh, I think because I dumped tbuff to the pass file. So let's go back to that object, malp-b. We have our root computer there, is in the buffer is number one. Let's do that again, so we'll get the password file. Quit, and go to transmit. Now it sends it, okay. Um, and did we already have, no, we need the password for shell, that's right, we didn't, we had the root password, but we didn't, we don't need the root password, we want the password for shell. Password for shell is Merrick. So we got it there. We're going to copy that. Uh, we're going to reply to this email with that password, which is Merrick, and we're going to send it. And customer satisfied with the job. Two coupons have been two coupons has been added to your account. A little typo there. Uh, to receive money, you must wait 24 hours before accepting this type of job. So I've already completed a credentials needed job uh, once today, maybe twice. So um, with the credentials needed and only credentials needed jobs, once you do them more than apparently once, um, you get coupons instead of money. Um, and coupons are useful too. Uh, you can buy hardware with them, hardware and hack shop uh, exploits with them, I believe. Um, Maybe also utilities in the shop. I don't. I don't know. Um, so they're useful for that. Uh, I like money better, but uh, it doesn't really matter for me. I get a ton of money from uh, missions. Um, so yeah, we completed this mission. That was pretty easy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the easy way to do this. So let's pretend we hadn't already completed it. Um, first of all, let me uh, let me go ahead and. Uh, Clean up, clean up after myself. Um, so malp b, and we'll get our root computer object. We're gonna r clean, or oh, I guess on a computer object it's silent clean. So we'll press f or five for silent clean. Uh, okay, that worked. Um, and then, so we'll quit out of the map, and then we'll do sign clean dash D, clean up after ourselves on this router, and then quit Y, um, and then I'll purge the buffer. All right, cleaned up after myself, uh, and then let's just, uh, we'll kill Hashem so I can start fresh there. Um, you'll notice deleting that uh, slash root slash five or slash shell.d uh, killed the hashing process. Um, I talk about that in, in a different video, but that's a pretty neat little addition. Uh, if I do say so myself, because it's an addition that I wrote and sent over, um, but it's a neat little way to kill uh, any daemon processes in shell without having to completely exit the script. Um, which is not super important, but I, don't know, it's, I think it's neat. Um, anyway, all right, so let's go ahead and complete this mission uh, the easy way. So I've already, you know, obviously I just did it, but we're going to pretend I didn't. So let's copy that IP address again, um, and we'll probe it like we did before. Uh, but this time all we need is the admin contact. So uh, admin email address is here. It's covered up because I'm in streamer mode, but I'm going to copy it, and we're going to come over here to social engineering. We're going to do login issues. 
So we're, we're going to put the put that email address in the to field for the administrator. And you'll see this field here in red. That means it's a field that we have to put a value in for, uh, for this social engineering. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, come in here. Um, actually, hang on. Let me back out of this and cancel and then go back to this. So the, the thing we need for that social engineering is we need the usernames. The username here is shell, which is S-H-E-L with a capital S. I don't know if it's case sensitive, but just take note of that. So we'll come back over here, social engineering email, we'll do login issues, we're going to paste in the, email, the admin address, uh, and I'm going to click on the username field and I'm going to type that username from the email. So shell, OK, and then we're going to send that. And look at that. That admin just sent us an email right back with the password. That easy. Um, so uh, that's a super, super easy way to complete these missions. Um, you know, we did it the slightly harder way uh, the first time, but this, you know, social engineering is much, much easier. So, you know, it the admin sent us the password. We can copy it, come back over here to the mission email, reply, and send it, and we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Um, and I will stop the video here. So, uh, as always, thank you for watching, and hope to see you next time. Bye.